To explain this, Princeton Review's Rob Franick joins us once again. Hi, Rob. Hey, good to be back. I'm sure a few of us thought of college as a kind of business investment. College is absolutely a business investment. The way I explain it to students is that it is a one, a great academic investment that you were making in that school. You're going to be there for four years doing great amounts of coursework throughout that time. And number two, it is a great financial investment for you and your family. And we have to weigh both of those things out, the academic investment and the financial investment to get that return on your investment, that ROI. So what should we be sure to look for? A couple of things. We want to look for the general cost of the, of the school, and we call this total cost of attendance, and that's the big four, tuition, room and board, fees, and books, to get a real idea as to what that sticker cost might be. But we can't stop there. We have to think about what the average um, discount rate or scholarships that students might receive to bring that lofty sticker cost for many schools down to something that's going to be manageable for the average student and family. So you're talking about financial aid. Can just about anybody get financial aid? Absolutely. There are two forms of financial aid. One is based on your family's financial need. And the way that those dollars, those resources are unlocked is through one application. This is the big one. It's called the FAFSA form. And that acronym stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. That will qualify for you and your family to receive dollars based on financial need. The second uh, kind, of, kind of aid is based on your academic merit. So basically, how well did you perform? in high school um, by rigor of your classes and the types of classes that you were taking and number two for the majority of schools how well did you perform on standardized tests the SAT and the ACT being the two of them so combining those two factors of high school GPA and rigor of courses plus SAT and ACT scores can unlock massive dollars for students based on that academic merit so besides financial aid what else figures into a college's ROI? Your career development resources. What are the things that each of the schools on your list of consideration are giving to you by way of career development and career services? So internships, cooperative experiences, things that you're doing outside the classroom, likely coupled with what you're doing inside the classroom to make you very attractive to employers or to graduate schools after you graduate. How important are alumni networks? Oh, incredibly important. And, and these are things that I listen for. And I, honestly, folks, I visit more college campuses than I am convinced any other person on the planet. And I listen for these things in the first 15 or 20 minutes that I'm on campus, talking about those career development resources, but more specifically, alumni connection to a school. How are those folks that have gone on five years before you, 25 years before you, giving back to current college students by way of jobs, internships, co-op experiences, all of the things that they might have in their professional experiences, how are they giving it back to current college students? What advice do you have about the majors we might choose? Um, number one, if you're going to major in a particular area, you should never take on more debt, student debt, than you could typically expect to earn for one year starting salary. So I'll give you an example. If you're going to be a high school teacher and your average starting salary is going to be $40,000, then you should never take on more student loan debt that would exceed that $40,000 starting, starting salary. Good point. Thanks, Rob. Good to be here.